in the um, late 1800s or 1900s, 1880, the survey showed there were 800 people living in Crystal. Now it's 900 and some odd, and yet the, the villages trebled in size. So there was large families living in small houses. Um, when I was a lad, it was mostly farms and mining. Um, just one person worked in Exeter. Everybody else worked in the valley. My earliest, earliest memory was being pushed under the dining room table because bombs were falling on Exeter. <laughs> That's my earliest recollection. <laughs> And so the war was uh, weighed heavy on your early years? Yeah, well, I was born in 1941, so I was quite young. But I can remember being, you know, ushered under the table because the bombs were dropping and one might come our way by mistake. The, the food production obviously was encouraged. Uh, we had land our army girls on our farm. Uh, we even had German prisoners of war working on the farm, picking up potatoes as well. So. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure to grow crops, food, because we were all rationing up until 1955, wasn't it? The, the, I think the bar field over to, to the left, as we sit now, was ploughed and grew corn after the First World War, but not the Second. Um, but um, no, it's, it's not very productive land, but it's a beautiful spot and fantastic views, and it's facing south. <laughs> this is the, uh, in the valley, the wetland, and the older trees, uh, which have now grown to a massive height. When we took it over in 1966, it was much, much smaller, and we used to use this wood for, for stakes to, to, to do fencing. Uh, unfortunately, being a soft wood, they would only last a few years. And then, of course, uh, pine and tantalised timber came in, and we went away from it and it hasn't been touched since. Right. John Edwards, who owned Newhouse Farm, uh, decided to sell off and move to Tavistock in 1966. We then uh, purchased 47 acres from him, which included steep fields. Uh, this field we're sat in now was originally an orchard. It was ploughed in the um, late 50s uh, and um, we've put the grass, it's been grass ever since. And the other fields uh, were a little bit scrubby and we cleared them with, with hooks and uh, I used to spray it every year uh, to keep the, the weeds down. Uh, it used to be grazed with cows and sheep. And then uh, we purchased Court Barton in 1971, uh, which was 85 acres and we just selling myself and the father at that time. Uh, workload was such that we couldn't maintain the fields in the standard which we'd created. So um, it gradually became overgrown in time. Um, so from 1973 onwards, no work has been done on the steep fields itself. And since then, that's when it's become overgrown and the way it is at this present time. Uh, this field here, we uh, we used to milk the cows here actually in this field with a milk and bale which is just inside the entrance gate. It's, uh, you can see there is a concrete pad there and we had a milk and bale. We used to milk about 25 to 30 cows here uh, during the day or might, night and morning um, and uh, uh, with a tractor link box and milk churns trembling down the lane. Uh, we retired in 1995 and we let the fields out uh, and basically it became, even this particular meadow became overgrown because it's quite difficult to maintain with the brambles etc. And so it's, it's rewilded to what you see today. Uh, we've been in the village for quite a long time. The, the first baby to record it as, as um, and to be baptised in the church was in 1587, if I remember rightly, from Pale Farm, where we were both born. Um, so, yeah, we've been around here for quite a while. And um, when Sam and myself go to pastors, pastors New, um, we felt we need to leave something 
in the village for the memory of the family who've always been involved. There's been someone nearly all the time on the parish council since 1880. And the interest in, in this land and for a footpath was about three years ago. Uh, my brother and myself decided it was quite a good thing, you know, because the, the land here is not very productive. Uh, it's hard work. Uh, so my wife and myself came down and went on the top lane, sometimes on our hands and knees, because it's so overgrown, and and said, well, this is where we need, to, this is where the path will go. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away two years ago, so we never saw the end product. Uh, and that's why I put a bench there, really, because um, that was one spot we could have a good view over the village. So, yeah, there's a lot of work done, uh, and with the CLT and with David Broomfield and Simon Lee, who did most of the work, with other volunteers in the village as well. Um, we, and with help from the Dutton National Park grant, and AJ Orne actually uh, dug out the path, because there wasn't one there before, after the lane, we've got what we have now. I, I think the majority of people look at it as, as a nature reserve, basically. <laughs> You know, and farming, because very little farming takes place now in the valley. I think there's only two in Cristo. I think there's only two in Cristo working farms. Then, you know, it, it's, it's basically gone. Uh, and a lot of the fields have been taken over by people with horses, just for walking their dogs, things like that, you know. So the whole landscape has changed. The hedge, hedges are growing up. <clears throat> the field patterns are changing. We're overwhelmed by the interest that's been taken in this project. It's been really the feedback from, from the residents of Crystal has been fantastic. And being accessed from the lower part of the village and the higher part of the village as well made it easy accessible to everybody in the village. It's been brilliant. <laughs>